Hello, hey, I'm Craig Balster with uh, the Balster Realty Group and Keller Williams Excel. Uh, today we're going to continue our ongoing series of how to sell your current house and buy a new one in this in this market. Uh, we're on to the buying part here. Uh, we're going to talk about the in-contract period today uh, and kind of what all happens during that, that period. So as of right now, you've written an offer. The seller has accepted. Yay, congratulations, you're buying a house. Uh, this is an exciting time, uh, and, and um, there's kind of a lot going on. Uh, the kind of the three things that happen during your in contract period, or there's three hurdles to cross, I guess is the best way to describe that. First is the inspection and remedy. Um, you know, you're going to have the house inspected and, and ask the seller uh, possibly to repair whatever might need to be repaired. Uh, you're going to have the, the appraisal, uh, and uh, we're going to cross that hurdle and then uh, the third hurdle is what I call life uh, the things that come up whether it's uh, an issue with uh, uh, some financing uh, we've had uh, buyers lose jobs we've had buyers have health issues that took them out of the ability to buy the house uh, you, you name it it's happened but uh, we just call that hurdle life and all that comes with it so uh, you get into contract and there's Really, two things you really want to do right away. Uh, if earnest money was part of the uh, agreement with the seller, earnest money is deposited at this time. If, you, if you're not familiar with the term earnest money, think of it as good faith money, or uh, I like to tell buyers they're just kind of prepaying some of their closing costs. Um, usually that earnest money is uh, it's, it's simply a personal check written to uh, Keller Williams uh, or the buyer's agent's broker. And uh, that just sits in their trust account until closing, and then you get that back at closing. The, um, the second thing you kind of want to do right away is schedule your inspections. Uh, and I say inspections plural. Generally, uh, there's three usual uh, home inspections or tests. The general home inspection, uh, the wood-destroying insects, or commonly known as the pest inspection. And then three is a radon test. Um, uh, and Generally, those are the three most common uh, inspections and tests, but you can do all kinds of things. You can test for lead, you can test water, you can uh, do a, a plumbing test of some kind for, for leaks. Uh, if the home is on a well and septic system, uh, you want to have those inspected, uh, the well uh, and the septic system. Uh, make sure that they're in operating order. Um, so once you have the test done and your inspection is completed, uh, by the way, you want to attend the inspection, very much uh, so. It's your chance to chat with the inspector, ask questions about what they're finding. Um, inspectors are wealth of knowledge in terms of general home maintenance as well. So they'll give you uh, clues and pointers on how often you should be changing your filters in your furnace or uh, you know, check, draining the water heater and making sure there's no sediment developing in the bottom. Uh, these kind of a home maintenance tests or home maintenance items uh, inspectors are very good at, at pointing out for you. So once you have the, the tests and the inspections together, we'll prepare what's called a request to remedy to deliver to the seller. And the request to remedy is just a list of items you like repaired based on the inspections. Whatever things come up, uh, you can ask the seller to repair. Generally, these are kept to the health, safety, and security items. Um, the cosmetic stuff or smaller stuff we generally don't concern the seller about. Uh, the, the inspections are, are in, in remedy is it's kind of part of the standard contract. However, these days often buyers are eliminating one or both of those. Uh, don't, don't recommend you, you buy a house without having it inspected, but it is common these days to have the house inspected and not ask the seller to repair anything. You're simply taking it as is. Uh, you generally uh, have the ability to walk away. Something really troublesome uh, should come up, but uh, it's more common these days just to have the inspection and go, okay, it's it's fine, it'll work, uh, and, and you not ask the seller for anything. Sometimes you get to ask the seller for stuff, and that's great for you as the buyer. Um, so you'll prepare the request and remedy and send that over to the seller. The seller can come back and say, you know, of the five items you, you gave me or six or whatever it might be, I'll do three or four of them and give you some money for the rest or 
I don't want to do any of these, or uh, I'll do everything, or uh, same, some combination of all of those things. Uh, there's a little negotiation there back and forth about what's going to be done, what's not going to be done, and by whom. The key to this portion of, of the process is to make sure that buyer and seller are very much on the same page about what's going to be done, by whom, uh, and who's going to pay for it. <laughs> so uh, once all of those things and everyone's uh, once all those things are agreed upon and uh, in place, uh, we move on to the appraisal portion of the process. The appraisal, the standard language is that uh, if the appraisal comes in at or above purchase price, all is good, and we move on with the process. <clears throat> if the appraisal comes in short of the agreed upon purchase price, we have what we call an appraisal gap. Um, it, the traditional way or the standard way uh, is that you would go back to the seller and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, we have a gap here. We're a little short, $10,000, $5,000, whatever it might be. Uh, and how are we going to make up this difference? Sometimes buyer comes up with the cash to cover that. Sometimes seller comes down to price to, to reach the uh, appraised value. Uh, or some combination of the two. These days, often as part of the negotiation or part of the offer process, buyer has offered to cover some dollar amount of appraisal uh, gap coverage is what we call it. So as part of their offer, buyer says, if the appraisal comes in short, I'll contribute up to $10,000, $20,000 uh, in order to, for the seller to receive the full uh, purchase price. Uh, that's pretty common these days. Um, just depends on the house and the deal and the, how many offers they get and uh, all of those things. But uh, if your buyer, if your buyer's agent is not talking to you about appraisal gap coverage, uh, the, it needs to be discussion of that if, if it's a part of your offer. So assuming the appraisal comes back good, uh, which actually most of the time it does, um, there are instances where the appraisal comes in short, but most of the time it comes in at or above purchase price, usually right around purchase price. Uh, I haven't recently come in short of a thousand dollars, which is kind of weird, but uh, we were able to work out that difference. So once you're past appraisal, you really just uh, at that point in the process, I tell everyone uh, we're all working for the lender. Uh, so whatever the lender wants, uh, the lender gets. Uh, a quick note on lenders. Um, a good lender, the good ones, will be asking you questions when you're pre-approved. They'll ask you lots of questions. Um, the reason why they want to do this, they don't want to send you out there uh, not being qualified for what you're trying to do. Um, they want you to have a good understanding of what, what you're able to do and what, what that means to you. Um, a lot of people, when they go to get pre-approved, they say, well, you know, what, what can I get pre-approved for? And they'll get... The lender will give them some big number, but what you're actually want to you want to ask the lender? Well, that's a big number. What does that actually mean? How much money am I bringing to closing, and and what's my monthly going to be? And the lenders will be able to give you uh, you know a good idea of what that's going to be. It's not going to be precise because of the taxes and uh, those kinds of things and interest rates fluctuate, uh, but they'll give be able to give you a good idea of you know, what you're what you're going to be bringing to closing and uh, what your monthly is going to be. And that's usually a, a big, bigger number than most buyers are, are anticipating. And so they'll ratchet down their purchase price in order to get the monthly and the down payment where they'd like it to be. Uh, that's important to do at the very beginning uh, so you're not uh, spending your time looking at houses that just don't fit for you. Um, the good lenders will ask you lots of questions up front. They'll ask for documentation up front. Uh, the excellent ones will... Uh, take your information and run it past underwriting and, and make sure that underwriting is on board with what they're, what they're trying to do. Uh, the best lenders will uh, know what follow-up questions to ask right away. So uh, whatever your information they're giving you, you've given them, they'll immediately ask for follow-up questions. Uh, the lenders that are struggling will be the ones that take very little information up front, ask for very little documentation up front, quickly give you a lender letter, and then send you on your way. The, be careful of those. Um, I don't recommend them because you're, what you're doing is setting yourself up for uh, finding out something later that isn't what you expect. Um, 
or even the, if, you, if, if you can qualify for whatever reason. Um, it may seem like a, kind of a lot of hoops to jump through at the beginning, but it makes the process in the end so much smoother for you uh, and makes you a stronger buyer to the seller. If you have a, a lender letter that says your income has been verified, your assets have been verified, if, they, if uh, underwriting has taken a look at your loan package or, you know, what, what all you have going on is, is that uh, underwriting signing off on that already. Uh, that's all fantastic stuff um, that the seller uh, makes, makes the seller feel like you're a stronger buyer. Uh, sometimes we even have appraisal waivers where the lender has uh, used an automated value uh, model and, and taken a look at the house you want to purchase and given a, go ahead and, and consider you and what money you're bringing to closing and all those things and, and, and waive the appraisal completely. All of these things, if, if they're doing these things, that's going to make you uh, more secure in what you're doing and make you a better buyer to the seller. Um, these are fantastic things. Uh, all right. So we back to the process there. That's my note about lenders. Uh, back to the process there. So once we're past appraisal, we're all working for the lender. And shortly before closing, you're going to get uh, what's called a CD or closing disclosure. Uh, you should get that no later than three days before closing. Um, the reason for that is, uh, so the closing disclosure, uh, you receive it, has all the numbers on there. Your rate you're paying, what you're going to be bringing the closing, uh, what your monthly payments are going to be. <coughs> uh, so all of this is on the closing disclosure. Um, and you have to acknowledge it at least three days before closing. Uh, doesn't mean you have to agree with it. You just have to have received it. And that three-day window is, a lot, is to allow you time as the buyer to take a look at all the numbers, make sure they make sense, ask questions. Um, if there ne needs to be changes, there can be changes. Um, uh, and so, and, and just to make sure you're comfortable as uh, when the process gets going there towards the end of the closing. Um, we have the walkthrough right before closing is the next step. The walkthrough is really uh, serves two purposes. One is to make sure that any repairs that the seller agreed to do are done. And uh, generally, you're going to receive receipts to that effect. But it's your last chance as a buyer to actually see, you know, did that electrician ground the gas line or did the uh, plumber do you know, fix the leak that, that was that was happening? Uh, and also, the second part of the walkthrough is just to make sure the house is in the same condition as the last time you saw it, minus any wear and tear. Uh, normal wear and tear. So, you know, there's no fire or flood or, uh, you know, there, there's no, you know, the seller didn't damage the house on the way out the door, that kind of thing. Uh, generally, a day or two before closing, you want to be wiring your, your uh, down payment and uh, funds needed for closing to the title company. Here in Ohio, any, any amount over $10,000 needs to be wired. Otherwise, you can use a cashier's check. But most, since you're buying a, a house, generally, uh, it's more than $10,000. That you're going to be bringing so you wire the funds I usually the day before is fine um, wiring despite its name can take several hours so doing it the day before just make sure that your funds are in place when you're ready to sign and when you're in your actual closing you just sit down at a conference table uh, the title company will have a representative there running you through all the documents um, all the numbers will of course the CD will be there again as well as uh, generally there's a settlement statement with all the same numbers on it in a different format. Uh, they'll have lots of documents for the lender. Um, most of the documents from the lender basically say if you pay your mortgage every month, you get to stay. And if you don't, you won't. And so, uh, but somehow we've taken that to be 30 or 45 minutes of, sign of signing things and going through the documents. But, you know, that, that's the process these days. So, um, depending on the contract terms, you'll the buyer will get the possession of the house right at closing. Sometimes uh, the seller gets to stay for a while, depending on the, on the, the contract terms. Um, but your your agent will go through that long before you you'll know that long before uh, even you even offer. So, um, so assuming everything goes well that, and there aren't any surprises along the way, that's kind of the process for for buying a house. Um, the in contract period, anyway. If you have any questions at all, as always, please give us a call at Balster Realty Group. I'm Craig Balster. Thank you so much for watching.